Hello and welcome to my shop. This is Jim Dedman, Sawlogs Plastic Hubs. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, we'll be doing something interesting. So uh, hang around, let's have fun. I don't do very many video introductions because <coughs> I try to use a standard intro and let you see the projects. But today's video is going to be titled, appropriately, Beating a Dead Horse. And I'm going to give you some quick background. Uh, I made a bunch of these oil cups, there's several different ways. And I've got it down to the point I've refined how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to make a setup. Actually, I've got a, 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 a new subscriber, has his own YouTube channel. Then I'm gonna send him. I'm sending him some stickers, and I'm gonna go ahead and send him some cups. So uh, <clears throat> for you guys who've seen this before, what I'm gonna do is show you some lessons I learned how to make these things a little less expensive, and kind of clue you in on the whole process. So with no further ado, let's get the let's get us a stick out. I got a piece of PVC, but let's all grab us a stick. Run outside and beat us a dead horse one more time. Now there are several different types of these children's paint cups. Uh, when I first heard about them, the gentleman who first clued to stick me into children's paint cups on YouTube said he was getting his at Hobby Lobby. Well, the Hobby Lobby, our local one here in Gastonia, doesn't carry them. So what I basically almost have to do is I have to, the only place I know locally it carries paint cups is a place called the Teacher's Box here locally. And I've never went over and bought any. These four here come off eBay. It's the cheapest ones I could find. Five dollars and something straight from China. It took me about two weeks to get them. Since I wasn't in a hurry for them, it's fine. Uh, Melissa and Doug is really, is really the best cups, and I'm going to show you a few things. These particular cups here have a smaller outlet. Most of the, and one of the ways I found these cups to make them less expensive, in my other videos I've used Durling, machined them out to fit but these cups are smaller than these are small. Normally you can't put a half inch fitting in them. So what you got to do first thing is take your paint cup, your piece of PVC pipe, and determine what you can do with it. In this case, I can machine a lip inside with all a regular piece of PVC. So it's going to be a simple matter to make four of these stems. So, what we want to do is determine how long the stem's got to be. Okay, you want your stem to come up about an inch off the bottom. I don't know if you can see this on camera, this scale. But basically, we're looking at approximately, so you want about this much level. So you're looking at approximately two and a, about two and a six, two and a quarter, uh, two and an eighth inches or so. Let me get up here where I can look at it off camera. Yeah. Approximately a two and a quarter. So that's to the that's sort of to the bottom of this to that. If you're using the larger cups, the ones that has the bigger bores where the pipe will slide through it, this again depends on the paint cup that you get. What I would do with that case is go ahead and I'll take these fittings and I would take them over to the lathe and I would cut them say half in two. These are just standard fittings and I would just glue them on there just like this. And let them set a little while let the PVC glue set up. And this is a case, this is the first time I've ever done this with these particular paint cups. This is the first time I used them. I just took a dot piece of dock them. This is a standard plastic PVC cutter. Next, you know, you get it Lowe's, Home Depot, or whatnot. Then we're going to cut this off. 
Now, that still may be a bit long, which I'm thinking it is. So you kind of got to experiment. Now, we know we're going to turn a lip into this. But you see how much longer, and I've already hung this up. So I'm going to already know that this is going to be a bit long. I, 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 my philosophy is you want to not manipulate this too much. So I'm going to cut just a bit off of this. Okay, now, I'm doing this, and I don't have my cordless mic, not that I'm just lazy, but I'm not going to be right here at it, so. With this again, all this is sort of a, a guess, and by gosh, methodology. All I want to do right here is just make a quick little pass with the grass, and whoops, I'm not wanting to feed in, I'm wanting Just make sure this is true. Okay. We'll just take it to the board through and chance it. Alright. So now we got a little chamfer. Now I measured this a while ago. And we wanted about 740 to the OD. And this is a case we're cutting it straight off the pipe. Some, depending on the cut that you use, you may have to glue the fitting onto it, depending on the opening. So you got to check your cup. And if you take your pipe and glue it together with the standard fitting, let it set up, and you know, like you say, cut it off. Because you only need approximately quarter inch or so I mean you could put it in a half but a quarter inch is good because this is only about an inch and a half long right now so we're just going to roll up here I got the lathe about 800 rpm make us a little light cut I prefer this to stick out just a bit I'm just getting a register so I can see what I've got. This has got to be 750, which is approximately a hundred thousandths. Now there's no, which is about 50 on the dial. And I want to fit these pretty close because lo and behold, you want these to have a little bit of drag when they go in. And it's really hard it's, when you're dealing with plastic of any sort. I'm just going to do this because it's just easier for me. All right, there's a hundred thou. For me, it's almost easier just to grab a dial in and see. All right. Now, if you'll notice, this wall is fairly thin right here what you want. Let me go get the cup, see if it fits in. Like I said, when you're measuring plastics, everything don't always just work right out. So we'll see this won't slide right on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about 20 thou and run right back into that stop. That's just a little loose, but that's fine. We're going to we're going to epoxy this anyway. See, there's a little bit of an edge right here, and I'm just going to take a little file. Kind of knock that off. A little file right there, just to be, have us a little smooth edge. Okay, that one's ready to glue. I gotta make three more of them, so I'm gonna make them off camera. This I'm gonna be. I just usually go by Walmart or Lowe's or whatever. Just get a five minute. I prefer to get a five minute epoxy. One of the little tips is please, when you do your epoxy, make sure when you trim your epoxy container, and uh, is to make sure you left your, make sure your little thing will fit because you're not gonna use much. You see how much. I'm going to put, I like to have plenty, so. 
get the right ratio of hardener plus epoxy here. Then I'm going to take the cloth and, well, something always has to fall on it. So, just turn around and just pop that lid on it. So now you've got some more for the next time. Alright, this stuff does dry on your fingers, so be careful with it. I have some hobby sticks, and I stir these up really good. You want to get a... I, I have these old insert boxes that I brought home when I worked at eat, And I say that... I also use this epoxy for magnets. Gluing... Refrigerator magnets. Machine them out of aluminum and glue. Or pencil holders or whatever to go on your lathe. It's really good for that too. Alright. Let me get it. One of these Q-tips out. This is something that you really want to get a good coat on there. The epoxy. The reason I prefer to use epoxy over anything else. You'll notice I'm going to try to get you up here close. So I'm trying to get a good solid coat. Of epoxy, because right here is where all your holding action is going to be. I've used CA glue with mixed results, and I keep coming back to epoxy. The main reason is that epoxy will set. You know it sets. You don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to take just a little bit here, just a smidgen, and just lightly put it around here, just like that. Then I can just slide that right together like that. Whoa! Now you, you can't just you kind of got to set it together and set it here over to the side and just let it set up just like that. You don't have a lot of area, to hold. and that's the reason I like using the epoxy. By the way, if you do it by setting it, you know how to set it right down. See if you can see it right here. There you go, and uh, that's the way I like to set it. I mean, it's just a simple matter. Now I'm just going to do the rest of them. All right, now they're set. Now they're not set completely up yet. I like to let them set a little while. I don't really care, and if you'll notice, there's a little sloppiness. I'm going to be honest, I don't really care. I'd rather have that little bit of sloppiness around there. That means I've got to get in the good... The bond is everything it, it, with this. And, uh, and like I said, this is varies depending on the style of cup. You may get a cup that's got a little bigger hole in it, and if you do you'll want to use fitting. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this set. And I've got some errands to run today or whatnot. And when I come back this afternoon, this epoxy will be bonded really good. And once it's really bonded good, we'll go ahead and snap the cups together. Alright, let's have a great day and I'll come back later this evening. Okay, we have success. These are very solidly glued. And like I said, <coughs> they just fasten together just like that. And they're ready to go. Oh. <coughs> that's all there is to it. So that's the finished product right there. You see me just snapping together. I may do some looking here. I might have to make some minor adjustments, but we'll see. 
All right, the horse is now finished beating. These two here are going to go out in the mail today and with some cards and channel stickers. Uh, now, this the tickler cups are a little smaller. And this, and I'm going to rehash a point. A while back, i done a video where I used a dollar store container, and I've since stowed that away. The top is so thin it will give. If you could find a small plastic container with the screw-on lid, and it has a pretty substantial plastic top to it in this area, you could make one like that with the extended snouts like the cans. But these children's paint cups really do the best job. And I've learned how to do this PVC trick, and I wanted to show it with you because it's fairly low cost. You can get, you know, you can get a piece of uh, PVC. I, you, most of the time, I use half inch, and I can get this stuff fairly. You can get it fairly expensive. You know, I've got you, most of us probably have it laying around from projects, plumbing projects, or whatnot. Uh, the where you glue a fitting on it depends on your cup. If you get your cup and start checking your pipe and you just don't have the room to work with, just take you some fittings and glue it together with standard PVC glue and let that sit, and then machine the little step in it. Do not try to use PVC glue on these cups to glue the, pe the pipe to these lids. I've tried it. It fails. You can use CA or super glue. It does work. But... By using epoxy, they're there, and it's a good solid seal. They're there. You can work with them if you got to adjust your lengths a little bit with your pipe cutter or hacksaw or whatever, like I did with these. It's fairly simple. So, in closing, I've cut this stick. I whoop this dead horse. I'm going to go dig the grave and bury it. We'll put these two containers in a box and send them to my my new subscriber and friend, and. and uh, he said he's going to put me some stickers in the mail. Says he's from up the good white, great white north. We know it takes time for things to get there. So, Mr. Everett, you're going to see these. If you see the video, the stickers in these two cups are coming your way. And I thoroughly beat this horse one more time. Anybody who wants to do this in their home shop and wants further instruction, just, you know, my email is going to be somewhere along here. Or it's somewhere everywhere on these new ones, even with the stickers, it tells you how to get hold of me. Or just leave a comment and ask me to email you. I will help you with this. This is simple. It's as simple as pie. The first thing is just finding the cups. And, and, and like I say, I'm, I bought these on eBay because I could wait on them. for, And I keep a couple around all the time for spares, gifts, or whatnot. So... The horse is thoroughly beat this time. I hope you enjoy my fixing up some cups for somebody and beating a dead horse one more time. This is Jim signing off. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. So uh, let's put a disclaimer out of the way. This video is my idea how to do things. It's not... Uh, uh, the only way so I hope you enjoyed it today the other thing comments are always welcome please take the time if you feel so inclined to make a comment on my videos also I appreciate all my subscribers the new ones and the new ones and finally the other disclaimer this is a copyrighted production of James Deadman Saw Logs Plastic Hubs for your enjoyment on YouTube thank you have a great day and we will see you in the next video